Welcome back to another video of Say My Assets. This is the question and answer version of our show. I'm Paul Carter. And I'm Grant Carter. And the date is 2017, February 14th. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So, we got some answers or questions to give, and uh, or answer some questions. And, uh, <laughs> what do we got, Donna? We got Donna right here. Donna C. Says, but we're doing this because it's so much easier. We cannot, there's no way we can answer all these, but... Since we put out the videos, we want to give as much information as we can, but we cannot sit there and type all this up all day long. No, because sometimes it's really complicated, you know, like how do you do measure this and then add that and then forget that the into a, in a paragraph yeah, form. That. Yeah, so face to face or uh, video screen to video screen mm -hmm. is a lot easier. It'll make more sense, we it, hope. It will. Okay. Um, so Donna, what do you what would you like? All right, so it says, um, this will be my first time doing any type of project like this. Cool. I feel like I can do it, though, after watching your video. Well, we know you can, after watching Sweet. other people's videos as well. Of course, yes. All right. And it says, I'd like to actually make new covers for mm -hmm. our or for my sofa cushions mm -hmm. as well. Can you give me any ideas on doing that? And it says, the reason why... It's a leather sofa, and I'm wanting to get a different type of material for the cushions just because the cushions are so dang slippery. Yeah, I yeah. can see that. I know. I've sat in furniture like that before. <laughs> I have, too. I don't like it either. Okay, so yes, you can use any fabric that you want right. you know, that keeps you in that seat. And you can go to another video that we did before and others out there. There's mm -hmm. hundreds of them out there. Uh, this one should help. It's a T cushion, which obviously looks like the uh, letter T. But just take the T's off. You don't you don't need the T's. Right. So it, honestly, I think it's better that it was a T cushion because people who do have T cushions know how to do it. Yeah. It's just like you said, taking off the T's. It's so simple. You mm -hmm. need to learn the harder one, in my opinion, first to know the easier one better. I think that's best. You know, if you learn to work with a plaid or a stripe. And then you go through a solid, pfft, that's easy. But if you go with a solid, do a plaid or a stripe. It's like pulling your hair out. Yeah, it's not fun. All right, okay. so you can go to the video, learn how to make a beautiful and durable tea cushion cover with a simple template. That's the one of actually sewing it, measure, or uh, cutting it out. To measure it, we have another video that says how to quickly measure a tea cushion as well as replace the foam insert with feathers. Just um, eliminate the teas. Yeah, you don't have to do the feathers and everything like that. But we do show you how to sew it in that one of those videos. Those videos will definitely help, so check yeah. those out and hopefully that will work. I think it's cool you're doing it, Donna. Yeah. I really do. Kudos. Save yourself some money and get some uh, nice furniture. Huh? Well, you probably already have nice furniture, but... You know, <laughs> make it a little bit nicer. Make it a little nicer. All right. All right. So we're going to go to the next one then. Perfect. Thanks, Donna. All right, so thanks again to Donna. Now we're going to go on to Jay Dillon, I right. believe. All right, Jay. All mm -hmm. right, do you want to read this one? Yeah, sure. He says, right. I work in the outdoor furniture. By the way, sorry it's so old, but right. we're doing the best we can. We're trying to get. We're trying to do a little bit of catch-up, <laughs> okay? That's what we're trying to do. So he says, I work in the outdoor furniture industry and always hear that the quality of the threading material is important. However, at the same point, it's quality of threading material good enough to justify the cost of difference. I would think that quality of the sewing would be far more important. Okay. Uh, not quite understanding what you're asking, but I bet you you're right. I bet you, well, I, what I'm hoping you're thinking is that both of them are. That's what I'm thinking. So uh, one neglecting the other is not gonna be a good idea. Um, if your sewing is, is crappy, then um, it's not only gonna look you know, crappy, but... But uh, your threads are still holding on. You know, you kind of want... Both you want both, you know. Um, so both of them are very important because I tell you one thing, Jay, if your thread is lousy, if you're not using outdoor UV uh, uh, UV tolerant, if you Like would, if you're using cotton thread, that's going to be gone. Work. Right, it's going to bust open and everything's done. So the thread is basically like the nails in your house. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're going to want the proper ones. Mm -hmm. So I, I would definitely go for the thread number one is very important for the elements of UV and the rain and the fluctuation of humidity and temperature. It's kind of similar to if you, you know, everybody's got a car and know what a car mm -hmm. is, you know. If you have uh, bad tires and bad brakes, you know, you want good tires and good brakes. Yeah, you know? it's a good illustration. It's, right. You, you yeah. want tasty food and nutritious. So right. I would not exchange one for the other. I would just go for both. Um, there's a lot of research out there on the, in the internet that uh, says which is the best for outdoor, for, or, um, outdoor thread. And fabric, okay. so and fabrics. Yeah, yeah so absolutely. both are very important. Get good brakes, good tires, good delicious thread, delicious food, delicious food, new treasure. Put them all together. <laughs> no, okay. You so right. we hope that answers your question, uh, Jay. And we do thank you for for asking us the question. I, I I think you're on the right path. All right, sounds good. Thank you. 
So again, Jay, thank you for that uh, comment. We thank appreciate you, it. Uh, next, we're gonna have Brendan here. It's a cool yeah. name. I like that name, yeah. Brendan. Very cool. It says awesome video. Very cool thank name, you, Brendan. Very cool name. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> That's real. Even better. <laughs> Question about the Daycron. How thick is the one piece, and how thick are the three pieces you use? Thanks. Um, you're talking, I believe, about, and I do see it right there. It mm -hmm. says the replacement of the foam video. Uh, yes. We did have to use three pieces because we were, we're running out. Yeah. A one piece Daycron is one inch, okay, they're about, okay, it's not exact, but it's about one inch. The, the, the one we used was a quarter inch, which is basically refreshing uh, Daycron. It's just basically one small layer that goes over when you're reupholstering for inside backs, around the arms, outside backs, outside arms. It just gives it a fresher look. That's all it is. So we were in a pinch. And we had to use a quarter inch. So we layered it. I think, honestly, too, that uh, with that one, like you said, the one inch isn't always one inch. It's a little bit less sometimes. It could it, be. It gets, gets confusing, yeah. but get the one inch. It's going to work. I think we did try to do four layers of the quarter inch. It went up a little bit more than we liked. It was liked. too much. It was too much. So we just yeah, ended up. Yeah, you're right. I think we just ended up doing three, as you said. So yeah. that's all you need to do. The one inch will work perfect. It will work fine. So go ahead and get that one. Uh, we just had to use what we had around the shop because yeah. we want to get it off to the customer as soon as possible. Brennan, this is an old, old uh, question. So <laughs> we're sorry. <laughs> we are. You probably bought new furniture. By now. <laughs> <laughs> but we did the best we could. We so, did. But we do appreciate it. Thank you for commenting. Thanks, Brennan. It was a cool name, by the way. Oh, yeah. I already said that, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, so thank you again one. for that comment. Um, now we got Lorenzo. All right, Lorenzo, you said, hey, guys, quick question. I'm trying to make a cushion slash bed that I can use in a camper van. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about using memory foam on the top of the standard foam. My question is, if I'm using the memory foam, am I using the Daycron to wrap around both form foams, standard 26 foam and memory foam, or wrapping the standard foam and Daycron then adding the memory foam on top. Well, I think I can take the last one. The last yep. one, uh, scratch that because unfortunately when you wrap the uh, just the standard foam with Daycron and then put memory foam on top, Daycron doesn't do anything it's after useless. that. It's, it's, right. it's done. So don't, don't do, that. do that. man. Uh, what about the first one? The first one, it's really up to you. It just depends. Uh, Daycron, I, I read an article a long time ago and it made me laugh because I could tell the way the guy worded it. He said, after a long discussion between individuals on a forum, what have you, he said, the guy just like in big caps said, what is Daycron? And it's true because when you're done with it, if you're only using one application, it's not really in the support at all. No. You know, uh, I think, you know, like you said a while ago. I, I said it's like um, a very low compression and low density foam. It's just nothing really. It's, it's air. It is. It's extremely uh, low. So it, it, low density and compression. Right. It just gives you a bit of a, a, of a softer feel. Now, I like Daycron. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is useful for cushions. That's it is. That's why we use it. That's why it's here. It, it replaced cotton. Right. Okay. We usually lay a layer of cotton, but cotton sometimes can shift. Okay, over over it will shift actually mm -hmm. over a period of time if you don't put another cover over top of it, so it gets kind of complicated. This thing cuts to the chase. It's a it's a, bi, a oil byproduct, and when you put it on there, it gives it a bit of a softer feel. Right, it gives okay. it a little bit of a crown because if you've ever seen it, you shoved into a uh, a foam into a cushion with no Daycron, it flies a board. It looks, it, it looks bad. It yeah. looks terrible. It looks so. really bad. I mean, it's boring. Uh -huh. So it's completely. So what this it completely flat. It's like a deflated basketball or something. Right, not no use at all. <laughs> so the, the the Daycron here, when you put a, the proper amount on, right. it gives it a bit of a softer feel. Mm -hmm. But that's it. I, you might feel a little bit of comfort from it. I'm not denying that, you know, at all. So if you want to go on the pinch, you know, you want to save a little bit of money, then, you know, skip it. It just depends on what you're really going for. So do not wrap the, the original foam, the 26 by 26, and then put on top your memory foam with nothing. Yeah, it doesn't work. Um, the only thing is, and I, I talked to you about this beforehand because mm -hmm. we were looking at the question, I believe you can... Uh, make the bands one inch smaller than the total amount. So that's your 26 plus the memory foam. And by the way, too, 
Uh, we don't know what your situation is. We don't mm -hmm. know if the foam's on top of a board and then the cushion go or the fabric goes over top and stapled on the bottom. Right, stapled the bottom. I don't know. Or is it that it is removable? Because if it is, you want to put the memory foam on memory foam on both sides so you can flip it. Right. You want to use mm -hmm. both sides so it, it mm -hmm. wears evenly. Right. So if you make the band smaller, that will give you that crown look and uh, the feel. You know, you're just gonna feel fine. So right. it just depends on what you want to go with. So you know, the first one inch part, smaller, one inch smaller, give you more of a crown. Right. Even in fact, you know what? We do one inch standard with Daycron, so you might want to go even just two maybe. inches smaller yeah. and make longer zippers so you can get that thing in there. Because mm -hmm. you know, the, the the longer the zippers around the bands, the easier it's going to be to get that cover, uh, get that foam into the cover. Right, so that means zippers around the sides of the cushion as well, right. because some people just do it in the backs. That's not enough. You're wrestling with it. It's, it's if a pain. it's two inches, that's ridiculous. You're gonna have a hard time getting it in there. Yeah. So the day crunch, you know, it's it's uh, not really necessary. I hope we answered your question, Lorenzo. But I think it's cool you're you're doing. I like to see that mm -hmm. camper van. That that would be cool. And. Um, Thanks for commenting. Keep on trucking. Remember oh yeah. That news? <laughs> Thanks, so, Lorenzo. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Okay, so the next one is Cameron. It's about a slipcover sleep sofa that we did, or, or hide a bed, whatever oh, you yeah. want to call it. <laughs> it says a leather sofa can't have pens attached to it like you're doing. So apparently she's not exactly pleased about what she saw. <laughs> Maybe this might help. If you use what we call, or is called, a painter's tape, there's a blue, there's a frog, well, I don't really care which one you use. Anything it's low adhesive. It, low, that's right. It's low adhesive. You can still do the exact same pattern that we did in the video for the sleep sofa using a white muslin fabric or any fabric you run across and tape it on instead of sticking pens in it. Mm. Some leathers can, and vinyls, can allow a pen to go through and they kind of have a self-healing property. But I wouldn't take a chance. No. So that's a way around it, Cameron if you want to do one for a leather sofa, because I've done uh, a few, you know, several. So uh, without a problem, they're not as common as mm -hmm. cloth ones, but mm -hmm. nonetheless, so fabric. Well, leather ones. furniture isn't as common as cloth, so not as much, that might you know, be something. You know? Not as much. And you also said, uh, uh, plus if the material, which I, I think you mean the top final fabric, mm -hmm. had, was patterned or is patterned, it wouldn't be that easy. Well, it could be, depending if you want to use the Hansen, Hansen, Hansel and Gretel method, right. right? Just basically leave yourself a lot of notes on the pattern that you're using exactly. while you're on the furniture. That's right. what's great about the pattern. We don't have that with other cutting versions, which we'll explain later. Right, exactly. We have a different method, which I love a lot, and he likes it as well. Mm -hmm. It's called double cutting. So um, if you have a pattern that you're wanting to work with, let's just say it's a flower or something, and it's, mm -hmm. um, I have no idea, I don't know, it's 15 inches that shows the whole top and bottom of the, uh, the, the floral pattern that you mm -hmm. want to put the on, uh, then you just simply put on your seat cushions, okay, and you know there were say six inches, and you know the height of the finished pattern that you want to put on. So measure from the top of the seat cushion to the top of the sofa. And then the center of your pattern, and you'd make a mark on your, um, your uh, muslin fabric. Mm -hmm. But that's only if you have a tight back. Because, well, you know, your cushions. Your sofa is a tight back because... Not, <laughs> your cushions, yeah, right. But the, the back cushions would... <laughs> it didn't sound right, but if your back cushions if you have removable back cushions, you're going to be tracing those individually along with your seat cushions. That is what you'd line up your uh, printed fabric with. I'm sorry. <laughs> so the, tight, the tight back that you have would be like a camel back or something, and that's when you'd make your marks in the center. Right. So that's, that, that would be a way around using a muslin white fabric as a, uh, a pattern. Uh, or a tailored fit to your furniture. Right. So you, you could use that method. <laughs> yeah. In any case, um, so hopefully that makes sense. It's really just about what you're going to be using. I think personally, the um, pattern using the muslin is the simplest because it is. the other version that we're talking about it is takes a cutting. longer time. It takes a longer time. But the other a double cover, but it's a lot double cutting, but it's a lot easier than than using. Um, uh, double cutting. Yeah, Did double. Right? Yeah, yeah, double cutting. Yeah. It's a lot easier than using double cutting. Double cutting was taught by his father to him to me, and mm -hmm. it's a general around all the slipcover industry. Yeah. Um, basically, what it means is you 
put the actual material that you're going to be using onto the furniture and cut it out around you there. You fold it in half, put it on there. Even the seam allowance is done on top of the furniture. So it gets very complicated, it gets very um, hard. The pattern, the muslin pattern with prints or with solids is the easiest to do. So it's great for beginners. You this can is, do it. This Cameron. is it. You got it. Hang in there. Don't worry. You're going to make it work. <laughs> do it. Do it. Thank you for watching another video of Save My Assets. Yes, thank you. We hope that we answered your questions well, that you can keep on going with your project. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so please don't forget to subscribe mm -hmm. and share this with a friend if they have a common problem. If they don't, you know, don't have to. Don't worry about it. They yeah. got their own problems. Give it a thumbs <laughs> up if you like it as well. <laughs> and we do want you to keep on giving us a comments. We'll do our best to get back to you, as we already said. But we're doing um, uh, five at a time. Yeah, five at a time. Right. Every single episode, we got five more. So that's going to be fun. Right. So we hope this made your project a little bit easier. And if you just happen to uh, view this video, maybe, you know, you feel more comfortable to move on with the project. Keep on trying to fix the stuff you have and keep it out of the landfill. Keep saving your assets. So <laughs> thanks for watching.